All right, seems that we do have sound. If at any point in time today, if you have questions while we're working through this project, please feel free to drop it into the chat and I will gladly answer you um, as well. So while we get started for today, the first thing that I want to talk about is that this part is, this project does work in three sections. We have to get our pouch ready for our project. We need to embroider on both sides of the pouch and then we can assemble the pouch for today. All right. So first up, we want to get a hold of our pouch. We are going to turn it around to the right side here. Let me see if I can, there we go. Now you can see. Okay, so I have my pouch. According to the markings and the instructions in your paperwork, we are gonna measure one inch over from the zipper in both directions, both at the top and at the bottom of the pouch. We're gonna do so with just using pins. We don't actually want to mark on the velveteen pouch. So I'm just gonna put one inch right in the center of the teeth that are here, and I'm going to measure over one inch and put a pin, let me actually move that here. And I'm gonna do the same at the bottom of the pouch, down at the bottom, we're gonna measure over one inch and put a pin. Flip it around and we're gonna repeat this step. Oh, thank you, Miss Maribel. We are testing all sorts of new audio and new setup here today, so we are appreciative while we learn a few new things, trying to make this the best possible video that you can see and hear. And then we have the one inch at this, okay? So once we have the one inch markings at above and below, we are going to flip this piece over. I wanna take the lining of these pieces and if you pin through your linings, just kind of pull it out so that you can get your lining loose and removed. Okay, and I'm gonna fold one lining back and I'm gonna use a water soluble marker, a chalk marker, anything along that lines to mark, basically connecting your two pins. So ultimately we are a um, marking that one inch over and then I'm gonna do the same on the left hand side. Unpin, I got my lining caught in there. Okay, and again, using your ruler and your water, mark, water soluble marking pen, I'm gonna mark that one inch line. Okay, we wanna take the lining and we need to get this up and out of our way. So we're just gonna kind of fold it up, roll it up, and we're just gonna pin it right to the zipper so that it stays out of our way for this project. And we don't accidentally embroider it to anything. Okay. Now, once you have these lines marked, we can remove the pins. They are no longer necessary. And the next thing we wanna do is find center. So what I did is I fold this pouch in half and I, you can do it right sides together, wrong sides together, it's your choice. And we just kind of want to finger press a crease. You don't want to take this directly to the iron. You don't want to touch an iron directly to the velveteen. Just want to get just enough of a crease that you can see so that you can mark that crease. Okay, and we're going to do that on both sides. What we're doing is we're marking the placement for this design so that we can make sure that we don't embroider into our zipper and that we get this centered in the bag. I am working with the large bag here at the moment. This also can be done with the smaller five by seven 
bag as well for this project. I actually have both of them here for you to see. Now, once you have that marked, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on getting stabilizer into the hoop. We are using heavyweight cutaway in this project, and if you purchased a kit from me, I gave you one piece of this, mostly because depending upon if you are doing the larger, the the 6x10 or the 5x7, your hoop shape, things along that lines. I also wanted to share with you a little stabilizer saving that I do, especially for the Berninas. When we are working with a 6x10 on a Bernina, we're using the Mega Hoop. Now, sometimes you may be able to fit this in the midi, but I need to fill this entire mega hoop with stabilizer, even though I'm only going to use the center of this. I'm never going to touch this portion of the hoop. Now it is not a good embroidery practice to hoop your stabilizer and leave these unattached to your hoop in any way. So we always have those pieces of stabilizer that are left that we don't really want to throw away, but we don't know what to do with. So, if you take the piece of stabilizer that came in your kit, it's about 24 inches in length, fold it in half and cut it so that you have two pieces that are about 12 inches long. Take some of that scrap stabilizer that you have. This is about a five inch piece, and I sewed it to both ends of this piece. This is now large enough for me to be able to get it in the hoop and my design will fit and stay within just this area, but now this edge of my stabilizer is secured and I'm ready to go. So, and it also helps too, especially sometimes if you don't have a piece of stabilizer that is wide enough or long enough for your hoop. Okay, that's there. All right. Now, we have to put this in the hoop here, just kind of keeping this centered. I'm going to tighten it up. I'm going to get this all nice and tight. I'm going to tighten up my hoop. And I'm also one that I do what we call burping the hoop. So I push my inner ring just slightly outside of my outer ring just to tighten this. And then we're going to take this to the machine. Okay. Now in your machine, in your bobbin, you can have uh, any neutral color is just fine. It's not going to be seen in this project at all. And then we're going to run the first color stop. Now you want to make sure that you have the um, right size design open. If you are working with the small zipper pouch, you want to be using the 5x7. And when you are working with the large zipper pouch, you want to use the 6x10 design. So we're going to open the appropriately sized design. We're going to run the first color stop directly into the, hoop, into the stabilizer. It is going to run us a placement line. Now, on top of my, the thread on top of my machine is going to be, I'm just going to thread it with the color that I plan to quilt. I do have a variegated thread that I'm using today. And we're going to let it run. Just stitching us a box. This box is going to be telling us or showing us where to place our piece of foam. So we have a piece of foam that's in your kit. You have a one large piece. You want to cut it down into the two sizes that are recommended in the instructions or 
you can just use it as a whole because we're going to place this, we're going to stitch, and then we're going to trim it. So if you want to save a little bit, leave it as a large piece, and then we can cut. Okay. So I'm going to take, there is no right or wrong to the flexi foam. We're going to take the flexi foam, we're going to place it on top of that placement line, completely covering the um, placement box. You can use some Kimberbell tape if you would like to tape this in place so that it doesn't move on you. All right, and then we're going to run the next color stop. This next color stop is going to stitch a bunch of ovals. These ovals are going to become our um, tack down for our foam and for the base of our Trapunto pineapple. Okay. So we're going to let him run through there. Now, while this is running, the designs are, um, these zipper pouches, are available in a variety of colors and sizes. So, while that embroiders, you have, like I said, we have the size that's designed, it's a 6x8, and then we have one that's 7x10. We have them available in both velveteen and in felt. So the velveteen pouch comes in three colors. We actually have dusty teal, there's a navy. We have a special bonus of amethyst that is only available in the large. This was, uh, we have a few remaining from 2021's fill in the blank program. And then we have the mustard velveteen. And then when it comes to felt, we have the blush, or it's a real light pink. You have a gray. And then we have olive green, okay, which is hard to see there. But all of those are available as well. I am working, Miss Amy, I am working with the Mega Hoop. It will work on your 590, yes. On your 590, the Mega Hoop is considered a three position hoop. So you may be asked in your machine to um, move your hoop to a different location, which I'll show that once this stops here, um, just so you know what to do. It will, on the machine, tell you exactly which location you want. Because your module arm is not as long as the full length of the mega hoop, which is 15 and 3 quarters, about 15 and 3 quarters inches in length of the embroidery field, we have three quadrants that we can embroider in. And the machine automatically will split the design per se and tell you which section you to move it to so that you can um, embroider the larger longer designs in your mega hoop. The mega hoop is really good for borders. Uh, you do any type of embroidery on pant legs or anything along that lines. couple more pineapples here. Okay. 
I have an audience in the room with me. It's quite um, nerve-wracking <laughs> to have somebody watching me. pineapple. All right, so let me show Miss Amy here, or anybody who may not know. So on the mega hoop, like I said, it's a three position hoop. So for my seven and eight series machines, we leave the, the clamp or in the middle, which would be position two. But on a five series machine, we can squeeze the bracket and you can slide the hoop forward and then kind of lock it in place and then the hoop basically comes down so that you can embroider in position one and then you can squeeze the bracket slide the hoop up let go and pull back you'll hear a tiny little click and then you'll be able to embroider in position three the machine like i said will notify you when you need to move to those hoops into that section so here we have our trapunto. So trapunto is typically raised. We usually use batting and things like that. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to trim all of the foam away from the outside of the tack downs here. Scissors of your choice. I'm a duckbill applique scissor user, um, but completely your choice. There is no need to try to trim this uh, pretty. These, this piece of foam is going to be trash when we're done, so you can pretty much get your scissors in here however you need. thinking I should have done the small. <clears throat> then I wouldn't have as many pineapples to trim. Well, I did the small yesterday so that I have an example to show you. <clears throat> but maybe I should have done the large. Oh, well, you'll have to watch me trim pineapples. You don't have Kimberbell's flexi foam. You could. Um, this is very similar to like Annie's soft and stable. So if you had pieces of soft and stable that were, you know, scraps that were around, um, if you didn't have that, you could still do this with like a couple layers of batting, if you needed to do that as well. If you opt to use batting, it will be a little bit of a softer. Um, finish because it's not quite as stiff as let's get that out of the way doesn't have to be super, super clean, super, super close. We just want a majority of the foam gone from around the edge because this is going to allow your pineapple to have a little bit more dimension than the background that it is sitting on. just keep the heat off would be good <laughs> okay a couple more little pieces 
there's what it looks like. It doesn't look like much, and it probably, would probably make you question what in the world is going on. We're going to take this, we're going to return it to the machine, and we are going to then stitch a placement line so we know where to put our uh, bag down onto the machine. Gonna run the stitch. Probably should take that out. It's gonna give us a nice center notch right there. That's where we're gonna line up that line in the center of our bag. that off now. So here's our placement line and our little center notch piece. So what's going to happen, and it doesn't matter which side of this bag you start with, okay? Our goal is, is this line here, this is that line we marked one inch from the um, zipper, is going to line up with this line and this line right here is going to line up with that notch. So I kind of fold this back in half, get that line lined up where it needs, and that little guy right there. And then I'm just going to carefully fold that down, and then I can fold up the upper side and make sure that I'm straight. Now, you can use some Kimberbell paper tape if you would like to um, put that on here, but be very careful and keep it close to the edge because the paper tape could scar your velveteen. I personally am going to use a pin in the outside edge just because I don't want to... Okay. Although this bag, we are going to stitch. We've got quite a seam allowance, so it's okay if it did. We're going to get that positioned in there. The pins are all the way to the outside edge where I know the machine is not going to embroider. We're going to return this to the machine. It is going to stitch us a tack down to hold our bag to our stabilizer and our hoop. And then we are going to just run the final color stop, which is going to stitch our pineapples. Pop that pin out there at the top so that I can make sure that the machine doesn't hit it. Pull this bottom one out. Our tack down is complete, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to hit the go button and we're going to stitch the pineapple design. And like I said, I'm using a variegated thread today. We're actually testing a new brand out here at the store for variegateds. This is from Wonderfill. This is Fabulux, their 40 weight polyester thread. Isocord, which is our normal preferred brand for embroidery here at Material Girls, is also carries a variety of 
variegateds, just not quite as large of a variety of variegated. Or you could stitch this design in a solid color. Does not need to be done in a variegated. do have some if you need we do have some pouch kits remaining here in the store as well and available in our online store as well as if you are not part of the design my membership my Kimberbell Club here and you need the design for today I also have the link here for the design. And again, in my kit includes the large mustard pouch, a piece of the foam, and heavyweight cutaway stabilizer. That is correct, Miss Amy. All Bernina hoops are on sale this month. They are 25% off. And so for your $5.90, you, your optional additional hoops are going to be the Mega and the Midi. Now the Midi is going to, you know, a lot of people will tell you, oh, six by 10 will fit in a Midi. Yes and no. It just depends upon the direction how big the six by 10 is in the far outside corners. If the design is, you know, two inches wide and 10 inches long, yes, it's gonna fit in a midi hoop. But this design, because it is six inches wide and 10 inches long, the outside corners of this rectangle do not fit into our oval shaped hoops. Almost done. The hoops are on sale and up for sale on our website as well. All right. When your design is finished, we are going to remove the hoop from the machine and then you can remove the design from the hoop so here is our one half of our bag i can and if you don't have one of these and you have bernina hoops you will want the hoop key um, especially for these original hoops so this hoop key is designed to help you be able to loosen and tighten and on a mega hoop there's not only a screw at the bottom but there's also a screw at the top so 
be sure to be nice to yourself and loosen both of them. Okay. So we're going to take this out of the hoop. You can turn it over and you can remove all the stabilizers. So see, it only embroidered into the cutaway, leaving this excess that we use to make that piece fit. So just a way to be able to extend some stabilizers in your drawers that maybe were cut the wrong size or, you know, the roll was shorter because you, you know, had maybe a smaller hoop back in the day. So I'm going to, like I said, remove the stabilizer up to basically the, <coughs> excuse me, the basting box or the tack down that held it in place. <coughs> excuse me. And then we're going to repeat the same exact process on the other side of the bag. Okay, and by magic, voila, there it is on the other side of the bag. <laughs> so I, um, to save time, I went ahead and embroidered one to this point. So we repeat all the same steps that we just did here with um, this step on the other side of the bag. Want to make sure, again, that when you've done this, that you did not do any embroidery through the lining. We have only embroidered on the bag. It will fit the 780 hoops, yep, any of the Bernina hoops, all the way back to the original like 165, 185s, as long as the hoop has um, that screw and other brands pretty much use these screws as well, um, it will slide over the end of it. I'm sure Gina will find me a link. Hopefully, hopefully I have them. If not, there is a shipment coming. So I'm going to fast forward here to the project. So once you have your design finished, what to do, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to unzip the zipper here. And we're going to fold this bag in half. And our goal here is to get the basting box or that tack down to match on each side, okay? My trick is thumbtacks. I know. Where in the world do you find a thumbtack? You can't use a push pin because you need it to be flat on one end. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Maribel. So on one side of the bag, I'm going to come right into the corner and I'm going to push the push pin in and I'm going to do the same on the other corner and push the push pin in. If I can get it and not stab myself. Pick the right corner. <laughs> so you should have the thumbtack coming right out in the corner. And then I'm going to take the other half of my bag, putting it right sides together, and I am going to push the push pin through the same corner of the bag. And the reason that we do this is we can't guarantee that these bags are 100% made straight. And you can see, or maybe we didn't get it in the hoop exactly straight, okay? So you can see if I match up my lines as to where things got marked, it's not exactly straight, okay? Which is fine. We're going to force it to be straight by working with our project in this manner. Okay, so I have my bag here lined up. As I have it marked, I'm going to put some pins in it so that I can take my thumbtacks out. This, these pins are going to hold things in place. Okay, they are sold out, but I know that they're already on their way. Oops, let me get this lining out of the way. Once you have your bag pinned, you can remove your thumbtacks. That way you don't stab yourself. And we're going to lay the bag so that lining is to one side and your lining is to the other. Okay. We're going to use the blue water-soluble marker, again, or the marker of your choice. And we're going to find that basting box line Okay, that little tack down line, and we're going to draw a line extending onto the lining that lines up with that mark. So, if 
I were to line up to that outside box and we're going to draw straight over. Okay. And we're going to do the same at the top. Now I'm going to get my machine ready to sew. Maybe. And then we're going to take our ruler and depending on the size bag that we are doing, you want to measure the distance from the center notch. Okay, so there, here's that center notch. So right where that center notch ends here, we're going to measure either six and a half inches for the large bag or five and a half inches for the small bag. So if I measure right at that point down, there's my five and a half. And then I'm just going to line that up. Okay. So we have that measurement. Okay. Now that you have your markings, so let me just show you up close here. So here's where we, on the wrong side of the lining, we have extended the straight lines all the way down the sides, lining up with the previously stitched line. And then we have marked that necessary measurement from the center notch to the bottom of the wrong side of our lining. And we are now going to set our machines up to sew. So while, if you're working along with me here, feel free to keep embroidering. This live will be up here for you to come back to when you are at that point. Okay, there's our vertical perpendicular mark and then we're going to take our zipper and we want to fold the zipper in half or on the bottom of the zipper tape we want to stack them up so that the teeth are on top of each other and face the um, velveteen. So let me show you here. So on this end, that where the metal zipper stop is, we're just going to fold this in half, okay? And get some pins here. I'm going to pin it so that it stays folded in half. And then on this end, I want to push my zipper teeth towards the velveteen and I'm going to stack them on top of each other. Okay. And I'm going to pin them so that they stay right stacked one on top of the other. Okay. We are now going to sew all the way around this project. And we're going to leave an opening about three inches in length here in the lining. Before we do any sewing, make sure you have unzipped the zipper in the bag, okay, that, so that your zipper pull is inside of here. You don't want to have to rip anything out. I'm going to start back stitch. I'm going to sew all the way around, come to this point, and then I'm going to back stitch. Okay. All right. We are, the goal here on the velveteen side is that we are stitching just to the inside of that line. That way that tack down is not seen, okay, when we turn our bag right side out. All right, so I 
set my machine up to sew. Um, I won't worry about a tree table right this second. Now normally I would sew with a color of thread that um, coordinates or matches a little bit better, but I have white in today so that you can see. I'm going to sew to the corner and I'm going to stop with my needle down. Use my freehand system to raise my foot to pivot the corner. Or if you have uh, the hover function on a Bernina or other brands, when you stop with your needle in down position, your foot may automatically raise for you. Good habit, never sew over a pin. Always stop and take it out. Now, when we get here to the zipper, we want to make sure that our teeth stay on top of each other and pointing towards the velveteen. It, just take it slow. I also like to back stitch at this point. You know that where you zip and unzip from are going to be a point of stress. And now what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm sewing and I am stitching just to the inside of that line. Again, we're reaching the point of the zipper here, so I want to make sure that my zipper teeth are stacked. They are pointing into the velveteen side. Sew up to that pin and backstitch. Okay, so you can see this is what we have going on here. At this point, before I do any trimming or stitching or anything along that lines, you may want to check like on this side here, it doesn't quite match exactly where I wanted. Well, you know why. <laughs> no, that's right. Okay. That's okay. We're going to, I'm going to turn it right side out. And if I want to make changes, I will. Oh, yeah. A little panicked there for a second. I thought I didn't open my zipper enough. Okay. We're going to then turn this right side out before I do any cutting. I know it's one extra step because I want to turn it and see what it looks like before I do any cutting. So I'll look at it and then I will flip it right back out. Okay, so just stick your hand in there. And I can see like here on this side, I can still see some of that. So I need to go a little bit bigger on my seam here on the one side and this bottom corner right there. But the other sides look just fine. All right, so I'm gonna flip this back out. I'm gonna keep my hand on the side that I need to fix. And then I'm going to go to the machine and fix this. And then once you have everything the way that you like, you can trim the pouch all the way around quarter of an inch. Okay, just give me one second here. Let 
let me fix my mistake. Well, not a mistake. My alignment issue. I personally could have lived with it and I'd have just taken my seam ripper and picked it out. <laughs> okay. So now that I'm okay with everything, we're going to take a ruler and a rotary cutter. I'm going to very carefully trim up and over, take a pair of scissors at that zipper point. Apparently Amy needs a new rotary cutter in this, a new blade in this um, studio rotary cutter here. I'm going to show you a trick that I do at the bottom. Typically, most of you may just automatically go whoop, right across the bottom at a quarter of an inch away. And what happens is, is when you go to turn this and tuck it in, your lining goes kind of like this. You can see exactly where things are. So when I do any sort of stitching and flipping, I'll do the quarter of an inch where my seam is at. And then I will leave the area of where I'm turning larger. Now, we don't have to leave it this big, but I'm giving myself a little bit more fabric to be able to tuck and get a nice finish versus trying to deal with that little tiny quarter of an inch seam. Now we're going to turn this. If you have a pair of pinking, rot uh, pinking scissors, you have a pinking rotary blade, anything along that lines, you can use that as well. I'm going to notch my corners or grade my corners here so that I can get a nice point at my corner. So when you're grading your corner, you go from the corner out getting larger or you can go from the outside to the corner, getting narrower. All right. Now we're going to turn it right side out. Stick my hand in the corner. Use your point turner anything like that to poke out your corners. Okay. Then you can take your bag, your lining to the iron. You can poke out this corner. And you can see because I've left more for me be, to be able to do, it's much easier to turn and get that to look nice and straight so that you can then either whip stitch this by hand, top stitch it very close to the edge on the sewing machine, or if you have a piece of double-sided fusible, so... Oh, there it is. This is Stima seam tape. You can also take a piece of heat and bond that you may have or anything along that lines. Cut yourself a piece. Tuck it in here. This is how I like to finish things on the insides of bags. Give that a press. Peel off the paper. Align this side and give it a press and that will glue it shut for you. And then you can tuck your lining inside your bag and zip it shut. And there is your zipper bag. I have to work on this corner just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. 
And then this, like I said, is the smaller option. Fix that too. Okay. You could really, for those of you that um, maybe have embroidery software or anything like that, let me. So this bag uses the Kimberbell quilting design in the 6x10 or the 5x7 size. And the only difference in that is that it's given us the tack down and that placement line. You could easily open this design in the embroidery software of your choice. You could delete the pineapple portion and replace it with a different design and repeat this process. The biggest thing, you don't need it to be trapunto, but the biggest thing being that you would be able to do this with any of the Kimberbell quilting designs in the matching sizes. But you have to be able to remove the pineapple and drop in the design of your choice because you need that original center line so that you know where to line your pouch up to avoid your zipper. Okay. Now, there we go. We've done that. There it is. You can see the 6x10 and the 5x7 designs right next to each other. You also have, um, like I said, multiple sizes. But next month, we'll be back here again on the 8th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to do the March project which is the spring banner that is done with the Kimberbell canvas tote bag. Um, so it's a unique way to take a canvas tote bag and turn it into a pennant flag. All right, if I have, oh, I sure can. So the question that we have is what is trapunto again? So trapunto is actually, it's kind of like puffing and so with the trapunto, by putting that foam down first, it kind of makes the pineapples stand out or a little more three-dimensional for the design. And so in a quilt, we sometimes will put down a couple layers of batting in a particular area, run the quilt design, trim the excess batting up, put your fabric on top, and then you can um, quilt the same line again and it just makes that section stand up and puff. You could totally do this without doing the trapunto portion of it. It's just going to be a little more flat whereas this just adds a little bit more dimension. It's hard to see here on the camera but it does have a little more of a tactile um, layer. That's on it but yes that is your trapunto pineapple zipper pouch for the February Kimberbell Digital Design Exclusive Collection. So thank you everybody for joining me here today. I certainly hope that you will post images of your finished projects up on social media and be sure to tag us, Material Girls Quilt Boutique. And as always, be sure that you like and subscribe YouTube, Facebook, and you can join our newsletter on our website as well to be notified of upcoming classes and events.